How you doing? Stop it! Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, then welcome to the channel. It is Monday, which means it is Monday mash time. <coughs> My heater's making funny purring noises, but... Yeah, anyway, we'll carry on. So what's been going on this week? Well, as some of you may have seen, I repaired my amps, then my amps broke, then I built another amp. You can see videos on that here. So what happened was the Ashton Viper amp, which is this one, uh, down here, um, I was kindly sent some replacement valves by one of the subscribers, thank you very much. Uh, it worked great for a gig, and then I had to uh, do a rebias on it because one of the power tubes was uh, red plating slightly, and when I went to turn the bias knob, it snapped in half. So that one is now out of action. This one over here, my Plexi, um, put some replacement valves in there as well, but it's still got a low output for no apparent reason. It worked okay for about a day two and now has low output um, so I need to get that investigated and what I did is I built this which got me through a gig and you can see a video all about that right now my uh, guitars for all project where I donate guitars to people less fortunate uh, people that can't afford guitars or for whatever reason has started and the first guitar did get donated and has been received awesome. Uh, the next guitar I haven't started working on yet but I will do, just been very busy um, but yeah I'll get on to that and uh, update everybody on how that's going. I had three gigs booked this week, two of them cancelled which is never good. Um, it does happen in my line of work, the first one cancelled because of an illness in the band and the other one cancelled because of the rugby. Neither of these situations were anybody's fault, it just happens, but it does put a massive dent, obviously, in my finances when things like that happen. Getting two cancelled in one week is quite rare. Uh, getting gigs cancelled is rare anyway, it hardly ever happens, but it does happen sometimes. Um, the rugby situation is just an unfortunate thing. Uh, the venue felt that people would be more interested in watching the rugby. Fair enough, they didn't cancel it as such, they moved it, so I still have a gig there, it's just got moved to next month on a date that I had available anyway so but you know it's always a stinger the song in the Hutch Club is coming along really nicely uh, we've got a verse we've got a chorus we've got a whole drum section and we have decided on a bridge section as well um, so with the next within the next Hutch Club which will be Thursday 7pm GMT remember it put it in your diary um, we will continue with that I have some lyrics as well so I'm hoping I can get some kind of lyric down for that I do have two other songs I need to um, do some work on for for other people this week as well as try to learn ten songs for a gig I've got on Saturday night so time is pressing on talk about going from one extreme to another uh, this week I have four shows to do. Friday night I'm in Portsmouth doing a solo show. That's a three hour gig. Saturday I'm at a blues club in uh, Barley Lands, Essex, uh, doing Brent Hutchinson Band gig in the afternoon. And then on the evening I'm all the way down in Eastbourne doing uh, a naked bass gig, uh, which is a nightclub. It starts at quarter to twelve at night. Whew. And then Sunday afternoon I'm doing another solo gig in Selsey at the Crab Pot, uh, two o'clock in the afternoon I think. And then Monday, collapse. So now that's you all caught up to date, and that's me all caught up to date. Let's get on with the rest of this video. And in this video, I want to cover an article I found on Music Radar when I was browsing through, like you do. And it's entitled, The 10 Worst Things About Being a Guitarist. Caught my eye. It's an old article. It's five years old. It's uh, published by a Rob Power, November 3rd, 2015. And it says, why guitar players have an axe to grind. Um, I pretty much, I will run through the 10 things and then give you my take on it. And you can decide your take on it as well. So, number one is the cost. And it says, do you like money? Then don't bother learning the guitar. Don't bother learning the guitar. Okay. Like high performance cars or class A drugs, guitars are an addiction. 
that is practically impossible to shake. Not quite sure what is meant by that really. Um, is he on about the, you're addicted to playing the thing or addicted to owning the thing? I know people collect guitars and some people, I don't know. I have like five guitars, never have more than that really around me. Like a high end performance car and class A drug. Uh, gas is very real and very troubling part of being a guitarist. Um, I, I assume they mean petrol. Um, in England we call it petrol or fuel uh, for your car, right? It dictates that no matter how many guitars, amps, pedals and assorted straps, picks and God knows what else you have, there is always the itch to buy more. No. It's frighteningly easy to sink thousands upon thousands of your currency of choice into guitars. It ne it's never ending, it's expensive, and we absolutely bloody love it. Our wallets, on the other hand, aren't so keen. They clearly haven't heard of Harley Benton. Yeah, I think that is pretty much nonsense. Um, uh, none of my guitars are worth any more than £200. You don't have to spend a lot of money on, on gear these days. There's so many affordable options. Um, and it's all relative anyway. If you have the money to go and buy a custom shop, whatever, then that's fine. If you don't, you don't have to. There's other options. So, yeah, nonsense. The constant feeling of inferiority. Inferiority. This should be good. Are you the best guitarist on your street? Oh, this will be really good. You might think you are, but that dentist that lives at number 42, how does he know there's a dentist living at 42? He'll shred your face off, and that little girl you see dragging the case to school that's bigger than she is, an actual classical genius, who has been playing since she was three weeks old. You see, no matter how much you practice or how good you think you are, there's always someone faster, flashier, and simply more talented. It's enough to make you go all Return of the Jedi and burn your gear. Uh, uh, see, this is... <laughs> This is one of those things, and I covered this in the live stream the other day, um, when people say that one guitar player is better than another guitar player. Um, it's absolute nonsense. Um, unless you're measuring um, s someone being better by how fast they play, like, um, like runners doing a race, someone has to be number one because they're the fastest. Maybe that's a way of measuring how someone's better. Maybe they can play more notes in 60 seconds than you can. But saying someone's better than you or someone's better than someone else is absolute nonsense. It's all perspective. It's all subjective. Um, uh, infuriates me. Um, so again, absolute nonsense. I don't feel inferior at all. Um, I don't feel superior either. I just play music. I play my guitar and I enjoy it and I entertain people and hope they enjoy it. If they don't enjoy it or they think I suck, I don't care. Um, if someone thinks I'm better than someone, I don't care. I'm actually not. Moving on. Being asked to play the same song all the time. Do you know Wonderwall? Of course you do. Everybody does. People who accidentally rubbed up against a guitar once and then never saw one again know how to play Wonderwall. And yet people at parties, at jam sessions, at gigs, even in your own home, will ask you to play it for the rest of your life. In, in 25 years of gigging, I don't think anybody's asked me to play Wonderwall ever. They've asked me to play it again, but it's never been requested. Freebird, on the other hand, that gets requested a lot. The repeated request of the same dozen songs are a burden that all guitars, guitarists must carry. And boy, if it doesn't make our blood boil. <laughs> okay. All right, firstly, uh, what's wrong with Wonderwall? It's a good song. Uh, secondly, if you're a working guitarist, like I am, um, then you pretty much play the same songs every gig, week after week. It's your job. What's wrong with that? Uh, and if you like the song and you play it all the time, what's wrong with that? Um, and <sighs> the other thing... If 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 you're at a party and someone um, whacks a guitar out, then they're just sad anyway. What you're doing? 
Um, you're just narcissistic and just want attention. If you bring a guitar to a party and nobody asks you, then that's even worse, what you're doing. It's your choice, you don't have to play the song, do you? How about uh, you learn loads of songs and then when someone asks you to play Wonderwall, you go, no, actually, I don't want to play that one. I want to play this one, I'll play this one instead. Or just play Wonderwall and just keep everyone happy. What's the difference, really? My Wonderwall's in my acoustic set and in Naked Basses set. Actually, when I uh, play Wonderwall and I go busking, it gets uh, the most tips, so why wouldn't I play it? Moving on. Practicing until you are nothing but hate. Practicing until you are nothing but hate. All right. It's drilled into every guitarist that the only way to get good is to practice. Yeah. And that's fine, really it is, because you learn all sorts of valuable life lessons from applying yourself to something. But in reality, there's no quicker way to obliterate your favourite solo that you listen to for weeks in 0.005 second increments, increments, it's easy for you to say, increments, until you've learnt it. You'll encounter frustration, uh, speech problems, uh, boredom, anger, and finally a deep and burning hatred. The thing you love will destroy you, leave you nothing but a shell of the guitarist you were, albeit a guitarist that can play Little Wing absolutely flawlessly. Okay, couple of things. Why are you learning solos note for note? That's just ridiculous and OCD-ish and not really what you should be doing. What you should be doing is learning your scales, practicing your scales and applying theory and writing your own solos, taking influence from your favorite guitar players and their solos, why are you ripping someone off? Unless you are in some kind of function band or tribute act that has to replicate each song perfectly, including you wearing wigs and jackets and stuff like that, I don't don't see the point in learning a solo note for note. Maybe study something, study what people are applying in their solos, maybe. Um, and yes, practicing is the way to get good. And if you're practicing something and it's creating you to hate yourself, then put the guitar down. Find something that you enjoy practicing. I've done a lot of practice in my years and I don't hate myself. Practicing until you are nothing but hate. Not practicing until you hate what you're practicing. Practicing until you are nothing but hate is the title of that. <sighs> Maybe you need to play drums or something. Everybody thinks they are a guitarist. Do they? If you've ever brought a guitar along to any sort of social gathering, oh here we go, that guy again. The guy bringing the guitar to the party. Just go home. Go home mate, nobody wants you there. Uh, anyway, you'll be familiar with the three chord wonder. They're the other guitarist at the party that didn't bring a guitar because he's not an idiot. Um, and they cannot wait to get their weirdly sweaty hands on your guitar. They learned two songs 15 years ago and cannot wait to show them off. This has never happened to me. And because it's a party and you don't want to be a total you'll let them have a go on your guitar and they'll get the same amount of applause that you got. Uh, an actual guitarist who plays every day and in his band and everything and they'll give you your guitar back and it feels all clammy and wrong and somehow evil. Why does everyone think they're a guitarist? Well, don't bring the guitar to the party where people will be drinking and other things and will just want to put their hands all over your guitar. What are you doing? Leave your precious guitar at home. Go and enjoy the party and stop being a narcissist. Number six, the endless competition. Secretly, every guitarist is in a fight to the death with every other... No, they're not. <sighs> if, if you are, there's something wrong with you. It may only go on in our minds, but the struggle is real and, is, and it is violent. You'll recognise this affliction. Every time you see another guitarist play, you look for flaws. You ridicule, ridicule their gear. In your head only, of course, you're not an animal. You mock their musical taste. You find faults with their technique, their tone, their style. Sounds like a very, very bitter, twisted person. Go on, admit it, you'll feel better. And it's okay because every other guitarist you know goes through the exact same thing when they watch you. It's exhausting. Honestly, um, I have watched other guitar players and I've been like, yeah, I didn't like that. Or I would have probably played that differently, maybe even better. 
But overall, I, I if I go and watch a band and there's a guitarist, or go specifically go and watch a guitarist or a band for the guitarist, I, I usually enjoy it and enjoy what they're doing and be like, that was good. And do you know what? If you have a positive outlook when you're uh, watching other musicians, other guitar players, you can learn a lot. Take take stuff from them, apply it to your own playing. If you, if someone does something you like it, apply it to your own playing. If they if they do something you don't like, so what? I do plenty of things that people don't like. <sighs> like the way he said every guitarist is in a fight to the death with every other guitarist. Not really. Um, I've got friends that are fantastic guitar players, will run circles around me. I don't want to kill them. I want to learn from them. Next. Number seven, awful guitar shops. There's nothing quite as infuriating as being patronised, or patronised if you're American, by a guitar shop man. If you're over 30 and gainfully employed, you are basically dead to these shark-eyed examples of anti-customer service. <laughs> Do they care that you've been playing guitar longer than they have been alive? That you know more about pre-war Gibson arc tops than anyone else on the planet? That you were, were into the bands they think are cool the first time that was the case? They do not. I'm not even going to try and re-say that. <laughs> Throw in crippling anxiety about playing in a shop full of people, very obviously judging you. This guy's got serious anxiety problems. Um, and the complete lack of accurate information about gear and pricing, and you've got a perfectly hellish experience. Thanks, terrible guitar shops. Personally, I don't really use guitar shops. I, I get my stuff online. Solves that problem. Number eight, forming a band. Where on God's green earth are all the drummers? I know loads of drummers. Maybe it was different five years ago. Was there no drummers five years ago? Because we are swimming in guitarists. They're everywhere. And they are trying to form bands just like you. Getting a band together is a torturous process at the best of times, but for a guitarist it means endless telling other similarly frustrated guitarists that no, you don't need a third six stringer in your band. Right. And even if by some miracle you do end up assembling a ragtag bunch of musical desperados, you'll spend most rehearsals arguing with the other guitarist about who plays the solos. Well, make it clear from the offset that you have a lead guitarist and you have the rhythm guitarist or make it clear when you're putting the song together that who does it who does the solo or share do one each um i don't think i've ever experienced not being able to get hold of a drama maybe a long time ago um when i was first in bands when i was younger but mainly because we didn't have internet and stuff like that so it was very very hard to um put adverts out and to uh, find anybody, really. We were faced with having to put cards up in music shops and things like that, drama wanted, blah, 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 with your phone number, and then they'd call you. These days, you can go on the, on the internet and there's forums and groups and blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I never had a problem getting a drummer. If you're in a war with another guitar player in a band, don't have another guitar player in the band then, maybe get a keyboard player, a triangle or tambourine player or something. Um, yeah, ridiculous. So, number nine. The need for speed. Over the years, the ability to play flurries of notes at blinding speed has become a defining measurement of guitarist ability. Yawn, yawn, yawn. We're not sure why. No, I'm not sure why either. B.B. Uh, King could do more with one note than most of us can with a thousand. Very true. All right, well, playing fast, yeah, I, I mean, I get told off for playing too fast sometimes. Play too many notes, Brent, but that's just the way I play. Playing fast can be fun. It is fun. Um, and some people like it, some people hate it. Ah, pardon me. It depends. Um, these people that sound like they're uh, doing a turkey impression up and down the neck, um, does not excite me at all, but it excites someone. It's all about perspective again. So, uh a ridiculous thing to say again I think um, yes playing fast does impress some people and playing fast uh, sometimes is warranted within the context of the song uh, you wouldn't find BB King going up and down the neck one because he probably couldn't but two the songs he was playing which are usually nice uh, soulful blues songs or rock and roll type songs it wouldn't fit the song would it 
And we've got to remember there are a lot of fake guitar players, and what I mean by that, the Instagram guitar players that speed up their videos. If you want to play fast, play fast, it's up to you, it's your life, it's your guitar. My advice. Which brings us on to the last point. Hurrah! Bad guitars. For anyone who has invested a decent amount of their life lusting after buying and then lovely maintaining guitars. How you doing? An encounter with a GSO is like a slap in the face. What's a GSO? Badly finished frets, dodgy electrics and necks shaped like a question mark. These are but a fraction of the issues that will invoke biblical anger in any guitar. Ist. We're not sure what's worse, the cheap poorly built guitar doomed from birth or the decent but abused instrument with its ancient rusty strings, buzzing frets and thick layer of finger sludge on the fretboard. Either way, it's the stuff of actual nightmares. Okay, we've all had it. We've all had guitars with issues that need to be fixed. Uh, my advice here, learn how to set up a guitar. It's not difficult. There's loads of YouTube videos about it. Um, lusting after a guitar is a bit sad, isn't it? It's an inanimate object. Why are you lusting and loving an inanimate object? It's just a tool. Um, I know that some guitars are beautiful and some you'd like to get your hands on, but... Um, it's a guitar. Calm down. Most most issues with guitars can be fixed. If you buy a guitar and it's got issues like a question mark shaped neck, then one would hope that you'd send it back or take it back for a refund. Um, if you're buying it second hand, why, what are you doing buying a guitar in that bad state in the first place? Everything's fixable. How are you doing? I do hope you did enjoy this week's Monday Mash. If you like this channel, and you should, because it's the best guitar channel on the planet. Actually, no, it's not, but it's still really cool. Um, please hit me a subscribe, uh, give me a thumb, leave me a comment. All that usual stuff helps me out in a big way. Only one thing left to say, and that is peace. Till next time. Cue the jingle. If you like my YouTube show, hit like and comment and get involved. If you dig my vibe, then hit subscribe and never miss an episode of my YouTube show. Till next time.